Hi, this is Javanka from JavankaCRS.com and today I have a really special guest. Her name is Whitney Lordson and she is known as the Eco Vegan Gal. Hi Whitney! Hi! <laughs> Whitney is an amazing healthy living crusader and um, she just has this great story and she's been doing a lot of great things since like I want to say like 20 2008 2009 you've been on this kind of you know healthy living kick and trying to spread the message that it is possible mm -hmm. to live a healthy conscious lifestyle right absolutely yes okay and for those of you who don't know Whitney um, and you should I'm gonna tell you a little bit about her I'm, I'm, I'm pulling this information out of her website so I'm hoping if it, there's something that is not accurate Whitney just just tell me and you can just <laughs> interrupt me it's totally fine as I said she is a healthy living crusader she also has just an amazing online um, community. She's an online content creator and social media specialist and she dedicates her time and energies in spreading awareness about how to, how to develop a lifestyle in harmony with your body and with the planet, with the world around us. She is a graduate of Emerson College and she has a degree in film production but she also discovered this passion for journalism and launched the website called Eco Vegan Gal in 2008 and she's been everywhere I mean <laughs> Mashable uh, called her one of the top 75 environmentalists to follow on Twitter um, she's been uh, pretty much on every one of the big media uh, platforms out there including Huff Huffington Post Live um, healthy bitch daily, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, and she, I think you also were one of the uh, people helping on that big film, Forks Over Knives, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we're talking about superstardom here. So I'm very, <laughs> very honored that she's agreed to talk to us a little bit um, and let us pick her brain. So welcome again, Whitney. Thank you. I'm honored to be here today. This is exciting. It's such an important topic, too. Absolutely. And today I want to talk specifically about, you know, we want to have a conversation about metabolism and about protein and all those myths when it comes to people that eat a plant-based diet or people that are eating a mostly plant-based diet that want to embrace living uh, a lifestyle that is more conscious and more in harmony with, the, with, the, with our bodies and also with, with the planet. Uh, we also live in a society that tends to, uh, you know, love people that look a certain way and we want to always look thin and we want to be looking pretty and we want to look like those people in Hollywood and in magazines. And sometimes that's a little harder to achieve. Um, and I'm sure you get that all the time. I get all the time people asking me that they cannot go into a full plant-based diet because it tends to be carb heavy. There's just too many carbohydrates, there's not enough protein. And you see that also in the news with, with experts out there talking about like, if you're going vegetarian or vegan, you know, it's going to be a problem. Be careful with your vitamin B12 level or be careful with the amount of protein that you consume and whatnot. So what do you tell people that say to you, you know, I cannot go vegetarian or vegan because it's too much, there's too many carbs. You know, it's funny, I actually never get that complaint uh, or hesitation from people, so it's, it's surprising to hear that, and uh, I, I definitely think that there's some great points to address there, because people certainly talk about carbs and wanting to avoid carbs, and this is something I've done a lot of research on myself, so a few points to it is, first of all, not all carbs are created equally, and we've kind of been conditioned to believe that certain foods are good and certain foods are bad. And I have a really great quote from Jenna Hamshaw, who, who runs a site called Choosing Raw and just came out with this great book, and in it she said that saying that all grains are bad because some wheat products are excessively processed or sugary is like saying that a piece of fruit is as questionable as a fruit roll-up, right? So we think, you know, a grain in one form, if, if that's just all we see it as, it's, it's kind of like judging, judging it completely, right? But 
things change depending on what form they're in. So just to clarify, carbohydrates are starchy or sugary parts of food. It's basically when they break down to glucose and our body uses this for fuel. So carbohydrates can be great for lots of energy. And what people associate with carbs when they shorten the word carbohydrates, they're usually talking about simple carbs. And... Um, and uh, like non-complex carbs. But not all simple carbs are bad. Fruit, for example, is naturally high in sugar, but it's got a ton of nutrients, it's got fiber, and it's completely unprocessed. So our body recognizes it and really can use it for fuel. On the other hand, other simple carbs, heavily refined carbs, to be more specific, like sugar and white flour and high fructose corn syrup, those are empty calories. What happens is they cause a, a spike in our blood sugar and thus they've been associated with diabetes and high cholesterol and obesity, heart disease. And researchers believe that refined carbs provoke food cravings and lead to overeating. And that's why a lot of people avoid them. On the other hand, good and complex carbs, these high quality unprocessed carbs, are vegetables and legumes and whole grains. And they take our body much longer to digest. So they slowly raise our blood sugar and they provide us a lot of energy. And they're often really high nutrition value. They've got protein, they've got fiber, and they're very key to our digestive process. So they leave us feeling satisfied. Those are the type of foods that I eat and that are part of a really solid plant-based diet. Um, a lot of actually of the low carb diets like Atkins recommend a diet that is high in those complex carbs, but they also recommend meat and dairy. And then uh, South Beach diet emphasizes a lot of vegetables, beans, and whole grains, as well as a little bit of meat, nut, and oily fish. So I guess like the vegan diet still kind of falls on that low carb diet. It's just that we're going to get our protein from, from something else. And I think this is a perfect example to talk about how you know, you can approach the plant-based diet in many different ways. There's no, like, one-size-fits-all way of eating it. It allows people to be really flexible. And, in fact, most people that go on a whole foods plant-based diet end up losing weight. Um, so, there, you know, it's certainly not – eating a vegan plant-based diet, whatever you want to call it, I don't think that that translates directly to a lot of carbs or to gaining weight. Yeah. I mean, in the, and just so you know, that's the reason why I don't call it a vegan diet is because it tends to turn people off or scares people a little bit. And I, so I like to say, you know, we are eating a, a low carb or, or densely nourishing plant-based diet. Uh, mm -hmm. But I love the point that you made about how a, a vegan diet or a plant-based diet is actually a low carbohydrate diet if you pay attention to what you're, you're eating, if you're not a muffin vegetarian, which is what I like to call them. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Those people that are constantly eating muffins and bagels and, you know, and white bread, and then they wonder why they're feeling sluggish, why they don't, you know, they, they don't get all the nutrients and they can't lose the weight. Right, right. Yeah, and, and the good thing is that there are even muffins, plant-based muffins out there that can be made of whole foods. You know, if they're not made with refined sugars, if they use whole grains, or maybe they're even gluten-free, there are so many alternatives out there. And I've definitely learned this firsthand because when I first went vegan, it was like, I'll just eat anything that's vegan. And yeah. it definitely, at first, I had weight loss, but then it started creeping back up. And it wasn't until I started to recognize that I was eating a lot of processed foods, but also I have a sensitivity to gluten. So for me, most of those refined carbs in a lot of forms were not working for my body. It wasn't until I started eating the more complex whole grains and gluten-free grains that my body responded and the weight went back down due to you know, less inflammation. Yes. So it's, I think it's really important to understand how your specific body works because not everyone is going to respond to certain carbohydrates in the same way. Correct, correct. So let's shift gears and talk a little bit about protein. Uh, yeah. Because you mentioned that as a plant-based eater, you just see the only difference between that and say someone that follows, say, a, a paleo diet is that they get their protein from animal flesh and mm -hmm. the rest of the people that, you know, say plant-based eaters, people like you and I get proteins from plants. And right. there is also that, that big myth about the protein myth that, you know, yeah. vegetarians and vegans don't get enough protein in their diet. And I, I actually read books from people that follow different dietary regimes 
just because I want to get their takes. And these are people that are highly respected people in their, mm -hmm. in their field of study. And, um, and it's a little disappointing sometimes hearing some of these people say, you know, there is no way that you can get enough protein. Uh, or or e or protein that is compatible to our bodies um, with a fully vegan diet. What's your mm -hmm. take? Well, obviously, I disagree with that. I've been vegan for almost eleven years now and have had almost zero health problems, and none of them and none of the health issues I've had in that whole time have been related to my vegan diet. They've you know just or been protein deficiency for that. Yeah, exactly. So. I, you know, I've never even had a doctor. I've been to so many doctors in the past 11 years, and none of them have ever said, I need more protein. So from a personal experience, it, it hasn't been a problem. But I have also heavily researched this, and it is a major myth that animal products are the best source of protein. And, and many doctors and researchers have proven this as well. Um, in fact, studies have shown that as the protein consumption goes up, which is, you know, people in the U.S. specifically <laughs> eat a ton of protein, right? They think that they need to, especially if they're trying to avoid carbs, they think, I need to eat more protein and less carbs, right? Yeah. These kind of diet myths that go on in our culture. Um, when protein consumption goes way up like that, studies have actually shown that the rate of chronic disease has gone way up yeah. because excess animal protein and fat can clog our arteries and our colon, and that's the type of protein protein that most people eat. So they're loading themselves with, with meats and other animal sources thinking that they're doing something really good for themselves, but it's causing all sorts of distress in the body. Um, basically, protein is in almost any plant-based source. It's in nuts, it's in seeds, it's in grains, soy foods, vegetables, especially leafy greens. It's, it's practically impossible to be protein deficient on the plant-based diet. Now, of course, as we just discussed, there are not all vegan plant-based diets are created equally. Right. We're talking about a well-balanced ba vegan diet here, and that is where you're going to get all your protein needs met really easily because you are going to be eating a lot of grains or a lot of vegetables and nuts and seeds, and those all have the protein there. And there's also this myth going around that vegans um, need to combine correctly and you know, I've read a few different things on this. Usually people say that we don't need to get all of the amino acids with every meal in order to obtain the adequate amounts of complete protein. It's not, we don't, it, that was another myth going around that we had to combine certain things and a lot of researchers have found this isn't true. So when so. you say we need to combine things, what, what's just for <laughs> our listeners, what specifically are you talking about? Because we know that we need certain amino acids that we need to consume with food and because we, our bodies cannot produce them. So what you're saying is that there's, uh, the myth was that we need to constantly be getting all nine essential amino acids on every meal, and that's not necessarily true. Well, it was more that you had to combine certain foods together because certain foods weren't complete and all that. And, and that, that was like put out, I think, in like the 80s. And they've since dispelled that and said that it's not necessarily true, that, you, you know, it, they don't have to be combined in certain ways. You don't have to think too much about like making sure you get beans and rice together or vegetables and rice together. It's like you just, you know, you eat the whole balanced foods and you have a variety of foods and you're going to get your protein, your essential amino acids through all of that. But it sounds to me like if you, if you just eat like the rainbow, if you make sure mm -hmm. that you eat a lot of colors and you have a lot of fruits and vegetables in there, that there should be no reason for you to have um, any kind of issues with protein. But also more importantly is the understanding that protein is not the only nutrient that your body needs. You know? Right, right. I get, like, the last time I went to a doctor was probably around three years ago. And she was, she couldn't believe it. She's like, I, so what do you do for protein? I, and I asked her, you know, I wonder how many people, how, how, do you ask other people, where do you get your phytonutrients and your minerals and yeah. your 50 vitamins that you may need every day that you're not getting every day because all you're eating is meat and potatoes? Right, right. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's interesting that vegans often get these bad raps, even like B12, which is something that yeah. vegans 
it's challenging to get in a plant-based diet, so we typically need to take a supplement for that. And people like to point fingers, say, well, you guys have to have a supplement. But the truth is, is B12 is something that even meat eaters don't always uh, assimilate properly because our food system is not always, you know, coming from the, the whole uh, source or it's, you know, it's not a, a great source. So just because vegans need certain vitamins and minerals, it doesn't mean that we're alone in that. The truth is, is that most everybody needs the same same thing and so many of the people eating the standard American diet for example they're going to be deficient in the same nutrients because their food quality is so low so I think you're absolutely right and and the sad thing is is that um, you know not a lot of doctors have a great nutrition background they're they're only required I believe to have like 25 hours of, of nutrition but a lot of them only have like eight or something in their whole career studying medicine and so a lot of doctors just don't know and they actually fall into the same mindset as the average person does about things like protein they might not even be as uh, any more educated than the average person sadly what they're educated in is like medicine and fixing people and surgery and all of that doing tests but the nutrition side of it is is something that many people can benefit to learn more from I did want to add there though I still think it's important to get blood tests done on a regular basis for all anybody on any diet, but especially on the plant-based diet, because every body reacts a little bit different, and some of us might have trouble assimilating protein, and, and just because we're eating a well-balanced diet, that doesn't guarantee we're getting enough. So I say, you know, every few years or so, go into a doctor, get your blood test done, and make sure that you're getting all the right nutrients, vitamins, and minerals. Wonderful tip. Thank you. So what mm -hmm. are your... Um your favorite sources of plant-based protein? Well, for me, it's like everything. I mean, again, I, it's not really a problem, but I eat a lot of leafy greens, uh, grains, nuts, and seeds. I really love quinoa and hemp and chia. Those are full of nutrients, including protein. Uh, legumes from time to time, I have some trouble digesting them, so I tend to focus on the others. But soy and lentils are really high in protein, so when I do have them, I usually have those type of legumes. And uh, protein powders are wonderful, too. I, I rarely have protein powders, but they're really wonderful if I don't you know I have a busy day or I'm on the go you can just mix it with water they're fantastic organic high quality low processed protein powders out there that really boost your nutrition value and actually are very satiating as well so we have so many options yeah definitely uh, when you earlier in the conversation you mentioned something about um, how when you went vegan you kind of lost a little bit of weight but then you gain it back uh, probably mm -hmm. because you were, it was touch and go, presumably you were trying certain things and th certain things weren't working for you. What are, um, do you find that it's easy for you to have high energy and increase your metabolism or keep your metabolism high, especially if you're trying to lose weight on a plant-based diet? You know, metabolism is an interesting thing, and, and I think that, um, you know, people have a, a different misconception of what exactly it is, but basically metabolism is the rate at which your food, uh, your, your food turns into fuel, and every body is a little bit different in this, but the foods that you eat can either inhibit um, or increase your rate of uh, caloric burn, and uh, basically the calories are combining with oxygen, and they release the energy that our body needs, and um, Metabolism also affects our, our quality of our hair and our libido and so many different aspects of it aside from the weight. Um, and I, I think it's definitely possible to train your metabolism based on what you eat and how often. So it, it's a kind of a complex thing. And for me, I don't really think too much about metabolism. I focus on just the amount of calories I'm eating versus how much I'm expelling. I don't, I don't even count calories, but I just consciously think, did I get enough exercise today compared to how much I ate? And if I don't eat a lot that day, you know, my, my body movement might not need to be as much that day. But if I had really big meals, it's important to move the body a lot. That's really how the best way to maintain your weight at the end of the day, right? Um, but there are certain foods that, that can boost your metabolism, and luckily, they're part of a really whole foods balanced uh, plant-based diet. So we've got whole grains and vegetables and fruits. 
And then, apparently, warming foods are really great for your metabolism. So peppers and cinnamon and ginger, garlic, curry, onions, mustard, vinegar, all of those great things that we add to the food to make it taste really good can be great for our metabolism as well. And you mentioned energy. We can talk a little bit more about that, but um, part of one of my favorite energy sources, yes. but also great for our metabolism, is green tea. So oh, that actually helps promote fat, fat oxidation in our body. So green tea has so many health benefits, and if you have it in your, in your daily regimen, it can also help boost your metabolism. And lastly, drinking water, of course, is great for weight loss, and it can actually help increase our metabolism and curb our appetite. You see, I was drinking some glass of water. I try to keep it around me. I love having it when I'm starting my day. Uh, of course, around exercise, around meals. So water is very crucial as well. I love those um, those tips because they are easy for people to implement. I'm not asking people to go and research a new herb that they've never heard of, or expect them right. to you know to spend another 15 minutes cooking. This is stuff that you right. have in your kitchen all the time. Vinegar. Ginger is yep. something that you should have in your kitchen if you don't, yeah. <laughs> please do. But peppers yeah. and cayenne pepper is stuff that is a very mainstream today. And so, you know, why not just include them in your, in your regular routine? And I also love your tip about stop counting calories, stop worrying about too much of what is going to increase your metabolism. Just move. Your body was designed to move and move in accordance yeah. with the amount of foods that you're consuming that day. Yeah. Absolutely. And speaking about right. energy foods, what are your favorite energy foods? Those foods that make you feel light and energized and can carry you throughout your day. Well, the great news is, is that when you're focusing on the whole foods, plant-based diet, pretty much all of that gives you energy because it's fuel for our body. Our body recognizes it. I think the reason why people feel like they don't have energy, the average person, is that they're probably eating a lot of processed foods and they're, they're eating that standard American diet. And... I didn't realize this, so I I complete I was in that same boat, and even actually when I was vegan, I would have a lot of trouble with energy for a while because I was I was just eating so much processed food. I was eating a ton of sugar. I was eating like you know white breads and and um, a lot of like packaged snacks and chips and you know all this stuff. And I wasn't eating entirely organic, so I was probably ingesting a lot of chemicals. I was putting so much into my body. No wonder it was inflamed. I mean, again, if you look at pictures of me, I've done a few videos on this and put up before and after. And you can see what I looked like before I went vegan. And you can also see what I looked like before I, I went gluten-free and, and um, you know, really started focusing on organics and low processed foods. And my body was just puffy. And I didn't even notice it at the time. But looking back, not only did I notice that inflammation there, but I also noticed how tired I was. And it's because I was putting all this stuff into my body that it wasn't recognizing and it had to work really hard to do something with it, right? And it also was foods that, that were just spiking my blood sugar but weren't giving me enough nutrients. So on the opposite end of the spectrum, when we eat whole foods, when we eat really low processed foods or no processed foods like um, whole grains and legumes and fruits, green juice, all of these like really high quality things, it's just like fuel. It's like putting high quality fuel into your car. Your your body just recognizes it's like, yes, thank you for the nutrients. I know what to do with this. I recognize it. And it's just going through your body really fast. And so we talk about metabolism. We talk about protein and like feeling good. That all equates back to energy. We're giving our body that pure energy that it needs. And I mentioned earlier before, green tea is great too. Not only does it help with metabolism and it has some other great effects in our body, but it's got that caffeine in it, so when I feel a little low energy, maybe I didn't eat enough that day, or maybe I didn't sleep enough, which is also really important to energy, I'll have something like green tea, and that'll give me that, that boost without giving me the crash at the end. So for me, it's like really just learning how to balance out. And I also think it's just important from a whole lifestyle perspective. Sleep is so important. Oh, yeah. So many people are deficient in sleep, and they have no idea. They think it's fine. They're like, oh, well, I just won't get enough sleep. And we have sleep debt, so it's like on and on. Yeah. People don't take enough naps. You know, we have all these issues with sleep is a massive issue. And same thing with stress. 
stress can bring down our energy level. So it's, there's just so many different things that unfortunately in America and probably in other countries, um, you know, we're not eating well, we're not sleeping enough, we're overly stressed, and we're not that happy, and we're not getting enough sunshine, we're not getting enough exercise, of course we're going to feel low energy, and of course we're going to end up gaining weight. Yeah. There's something that you just mentioned called the um, sleep debt. Yeah. <laughs> what does that mean? So basically with, with sleep, researchers have found that we actually start to build up a debt over time if we don't get enough sleep. So if last night I slept six hours, I can't just fix it by sleeping eight hours the next night. I still am missing those two, you know, depending on your body, people need between seven, seven to nine hours. Um, so if you're the type of person that needs nine hours and you only got six, you, you have a three hour sleep debt and that actually starts to add up. So over time, let's say the, the whole work week, if you're working a typical Monday through Friday job, if every night you're just getting six hours of sleep, you know, you're multiplying that by five days, that's 15 hours of sleep. By the time the weekend rolls around, you're going to have to sleep yes. like all weekend, right, <laughs> to make up for it. And, and we think that we can fix this by drinking caffeinated drinks like coffee and energy drinks and even tea, you know, that stresses out our body. So when our body is just bombarded with that, and usually people add dairy products and sugar to those drinks as well, then their body is like freaking out. It feels horrible. No wonder people are getting depressed. I mean, it's just like this, this ongoing cycle that people get trapped in trying to feel good when it could honestly just be solved by eating really clean foods, yeah. sleeping a little bit more. Like those two things alone can make a world of a difference in how we feel. Definitely. Yeah, I tell clients all the time, it's about, I tell people and, and teach people all the time about sleeping hygiene. Yeah. Because it's almost like we were born with the ability to suckle and the ability to fall asleep. Nothing mm -hmm. else we can do as infants. And so yeah. we've forgotten that. But this is an innate thing in us. And it's amazing that we have, for, we have indoctrinated ourselves to forget how to calm our bodies and how to allow our bodies to rest properly. So I mm -hmm. love that concept of the sleep dead because it, it will yeah. put it in, in perspective for sure. Oh, yeah. And, you know, there's a whole other host of things. I've been meaning to do a whole video on this. I'm always collecting tidbits. Yeah. You know, for me, another big thing was getting the right mattress. Um, yeah. Right now, I, I have this organic natural mattress that's amazing. That's made a huge difference. So many people are sleeping on chemicals without yeah. even realizing it. And actually, research has shown that like the chemicals in your bed can, can slow down your metabolism, right? They can contribute. Even I think even lack of sleep can, can add, um, you know, can mess up with your metabolism yeah. and, and cause people to gain weight. So I mean, I would really look into your sleeping patterns, what you're sleeping on. Are your sheets loaded with chemicals? You know, are you, I did actually a, a video that, ha that touches upon this subject about, um, it was called uh, the Extreme Healthy Home Makeover, yeah. and I brought in some experts, and they taught me so much about, like, you know, not keeping lamps plugged in at night yeah. for EMF reasons. And, you know, the, they taught me about the mattresses and the sheets and all these things and, and your air quality. So many things contribute so to many. a poor sleeping situation. So, so we you know, need it's, to pay attention for sure. Yeah. And it's not just about what we eat. It's about our whole lifestyle. Yeah. For sure. Wonderful. All adds up. all great tips. Um, before I ask you where people can find you, because I know you've mentioned your videos and I want people to go check them out, I just have one last question. Sure. And I, you are a healthy living advocate, obviously, and you've been so for well over 10 years at this point. How did your journey, how did you get to this point? How, tell us a little bit about your journey. So my journey really started when I decided to go vegetarian, and that was in 2003. So it's about 11 years, over 11 years ago, because it was in May. I remember the exact date, May 31st, 2003. And I just, I did it because I was inspired by a friend. And I literally switched overnight. I thought, I, you know, I just want to do this. And I, I don't know if I ever thought of, of committing to it long term. It was just like, I'm going to do this. And it stuck for 11 years now. Um, and I, you know, plenty of people were like, this is just a phase, a fad. Like, I don't think anyone expected it, including myself. 
And then about six months later, after doing a ton of research and experiencing all the joys that I had from going vegetarian, I decided to go vegan. And my preliminary motivation was centered around health. But overall, I started to fall in love with the whole lifestyle. For me, you know, going vegetarian... I think, you know, I wish I could remember more detail. Had I known it was going to be a career of mine, I probably would have written down, like, every experience I had. But sadly, I only have a few memories from back then. But I definitely noticed weight loss, as I mentioned. Uh, For a a solid year, people were constantly complimenting me. And for me, I actually had a history of an eating disorder and struggling with my body for most of my life. So going vegetarian really helped me understand my body because nobody had ever talked to me about the things that we've talked about today. Everything was about if I wanted to lose weight, it was like avoid calories, you know, too many calories, avoid fat. Um, I was doing the diet pills and the shake, weight loss shakes and the exercise programs and the magazines and like just all of these things that weren't working for me and I felt so frustrated that it led me to some sort of an eating disorder because I didn't know what else to do and I was just desperate to have a thin trim body that I thought I needed to be beautiful right so many women are in this category by going vegetarian and later vegan it forced me to learn about my body because nobody I knew except for that one person was vegetarian. So I had to do the reading because I didn't know what to eat and I didn't know if it was healthy. So I picked up books and I just started reading, reading, reading and that's where I started to learn about all these nutrition things. That's where I learned about how animals are treated. That's where I learned about the environmental impact and it all just came together. And I just naturally progressed towards veganism and just you know it was for me it it was really just part of my lifestyle i didn't expect it to become a career but the passion grew and i was constantly talking about it i wanted to learn more i loved meeting more people so my whole career and healthy living advocacy just was a natural progression yeah. and i just for me i really wanted to help more people yeah. you know and now people come to me in very similar positions that i was in mm-hmm. Uh, people of all ages, but you know, last week I received one of the most touching comments. It felt like it was my 16 year old self <laughs> writing me, and she was a 16 year old girl that that you know wanted to lose weight and didn't know how, and she wasn't eating, and she you know she wanted to know if she could be healthy on the plant based diet, and it was just such an amazing moment because I wish I had had me when I was that age. Yeah, and that's what I think of. I think of what I would have needed for support when I was struggling and what I needed when I was so new to this. So being able to inspire, educate, and empower people is my my mission. And fortunately, at this point, it happens on a daily basis, and it, it, it pushes me forward to keep going, and yeah. I'm so honored to be that for people. I can hear the passion in your voice, and it is just amazing. And I love – thank you for sharing that story because – so many people, we're in a society of convenience, and so many of us yes. expect um, solutions uh, yesterday. And, yeah. uh, and for all of us, I mean, unfortunately, it didn't take us overnight to get to where we were when, when our body started to give us uh, signs of distress. It's not going to be an immediate process. So it's so important that people listen to those stories like yours and get to understand that it is a journey of self-discovery and self-healing and also self-love. It's, it sounds to yes. me like you learned throughout the process. You learn about your body, but you also learn about yourself and learn about give yourself permission to try and fail and try some more until you found something that worked for you. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. I mean, it definitely didn't happen overnight. I'm still, I still learn things every yeah. day. <laughs> I mean, yes. you know, it's, it's, um, it's just an ongoing thing and an ongoing yeah. uh process of of loving myself and loving my body and understanding and and you know as we age th- things change and yeah. and, and it's just uh <laughs> you know I, I love that though for it's me fun. I love researching and I love learning and and for, it's just really fun and, and being able to share with other people is yeah. is just an extra layer of that at all well, Whitney, we could talk about this all day, and I could be picking your brain all night, but we don't have all night. Um, yeah. Before I let you go, 
Uh, you mentioned your videos in the past, um, and I know you have a fantastic website. You have a really vibrant Facebook community. You have a YouTube channel. Tell us a little bit about those. Where can we find you? Sure. Well, Eco Vegan Gal is a brand that extends across the internet, and it's really meant to be an online empowerment resource for people who are curious about how to be better to their bodies and the planet. And the planet, I mean, like other people, the actual environment and animals, that to me is the whole planet experience. And as I mentioned, it's, it's really my aim to inspire people and support people, help them on that journey of being happier as a result of being healthier and I do this through my biggest focus is YouTube videos or just video creation overall so I have actually I think five or six channels right now I have a main channel called eco vegan gal where that's like the, my big focus and I have a few secondary channels that cover anything from like what I eat on a regular basis to how my dog is also uh, living the eco vegan lifestyle and I have a channel that's just kind of an emotional expression that that one has been um, a fan fan favorite people have enjoyed so I, I really spread it across because everybody has different tastes there but my main channel is Eco Vegan Gal okay. and um, then I also do some written content but my main passion is video so the written content is a little less frequent and social media as you mentioned so Facebook and Twitter Instagram Pinterest those are, are really the main I do a little bit on LinkedIn and Google Plus as well um, so Google you can find we... all of those links if you go to ecovegangal.com they're at the bottom and everything kind of feeds from one to another I also have a newsletter so the newsletter is is a great source for people who yeah. want things directly to their inbox and um, you know I always offer special things like I have this this t-shirt line that says food is my health care and um, when you sign up for the newsletter, you can get a discount on those. And these are just another way for people to spread the message about food being part of their health care and, and their happy lives in all that sense. And um, in terms of what's coming up, I've got an ebook that I'm working on, and I hope to release that in, in the next few weeks. And that's all about how to eat healthy and vegan and organic on a budget. So many people have these myths that, Eating healthy is expensive, eating vegan is expensive, and eating organic is expensive. So combining it all to give some tips to show that you can actually eat organic and vegan for under $5 a day, which people don't believe, but it's, it's absolutely true. <laughs> so you're going to give us tips, so it's great. So I'm going to stay in touch with you so that you can, uh, and, uh, as soon as I see that coming up, I'll share with my community as well. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. Well, Whitney, it's been a pleasure talking with you. And I, like, like your followers, I've been a follower of yours for a couple of years. And I love the work that you do. And I've been wanting to talk with you and pick your brain and get uh, <laughs> your take on your lifestyle um, for many years. I am honored and so happy and so excited to have you here. Thank you so much again for being here with us today. Thank you for having me. This was really wonderful, and, and it's amazing that you're getting information like this out there, and you're making the world a better place by educating people and opening eyes in this way. So thank you for everything that you do. Absolutely. Well, it's people like you that inspire me to do that every day. So, it's full circle. Yes, it's full exactly. Circle. We're going to be like giving each other love all night long. Um, so we will put um, the ecomvegangal.com link right below this video so that people can check you out. And for the rest of you, stay tuned for more great videos and uh, sign up for my newsletter in order to get uh, to live a healthy, happy, and beautiful life. Sign up for the weekly jolt at jovancacrs.com. See you soon. Bye. Get free detox, weight loss, healthy living tips, and inspirational messages galore when you subscribe to the weekly jolt. Just click the subscribe button, and I'll see you next time. Show me what your body can